Hey, come with me for a minute. We're gonna go up the man cave real quick. I gotta show you something. Excuse the stairs coming up, it's still under construction. All right, I gotta put you down just for a minute. All right, if you're anything like me, you hate wasting money. You hate spending money on something that isn't worth it. Uh, something that you don't use, that doesn't work the way you think it should. And I, I tend to be, I, I try to be pretty careful when I buy stuff, uh, not impulse buy. So every now and then you find something that suits your needs better than you could have ever, ever thought. Um, one of the things, so I was just inside and I was thinking, I gotta get my hunting stuff cleaned up. Here, I need a chair. I need to get my hunting stuff cleaned up from this past year. So I was gonna come out and start going through it and it just dawned on me. I was like, well, I'll make a video about it. This is one of the one of the few buys, you know, that you really, it feels like it's 100% worth it. That would be hard to replace. So yeah, this so this is what I carry with me in the woods every day uh, when I'm deer hunting, when I'm deer tracking. Uh, it's the, it, made, it was made by uh, Big Woods Box. It's their, I guess they call it a belt pack. Back in the day, it was called a fanny pack. We, years ago, we carried belt packs that were, I think they were from Cabela's or a company like that. And I, they were made out of, I think they were fleece. They'd get wet throughout the day. They would, uh, the snow would ball up on them. You know, if you're walking through trees that are covered in snow and whatnot, they just, they weren't the best, the best, they're the best option at the time. They just didn't, they didn't work that great. Um, never carried backpacks, it just doesn't feel natural, at least for me. If I go to pull up and shoot or do anything like that, it just doesn't feel natural. I don't like the weight on my shoulders. So th those guys over at Big Woods Box, I mean, they hit a home run with this. Functions superbly for what I need. When they came out, and I don't know if you can buy these anymore. It, so it's made out of wool. Uh, the inside, I believe, you know what, while we're doing this, I'm gonna go, I don't even know what's inside my, my pack right now. I haven't touched it since the end of deer season. So I'll pull that stuff out too, and we'll see what I, what I carry. See, so yeah, the outside's made of wool, inside's made of, it's like a nylon. I don't think it's completely waterproof, um, but nothing inside has ever gotten wet. Like I said, in the past, we'd carried belt packs, but they were made out of uh, fleece. Uh, they were quiet, but they if it was pouring out or if it was snowing or you're walking through woods that, are, that has a lot of snow on the tree limbs, uh, yeah, by the end of the day, the stuff inside would get kind of damp. And like I said, it would pill up with snow. It would uh, get these snowballs all over it. So yeah, they, they hit a home run with this, at least, like I said, at least for me. Um, and it's such a niche product. This isn't anything you'd carry to go like hiking for the day outside of hunting, in my opinion. It's not something, you know, if you're gonna go climb a mountain or something, it's not gonna function well for that. You know, it's, like I said, it's a very niche product and when they came out with it, I was like, oh my God, um, it works perfect for me. But anyway, so we'll see. So yeah, inside's nylon, it's got several pockets. It's got a pocket in the front. It's got a GPS uh, pocket on top, uh, which I'll go over the, there's some things that I don't like about it, but again, it's such a niche product and, and to keep it, I guess, within a reasonable price point that people are going to buy it at. I mean, you can't have all the, can't have it perfect, you know, have all the bells and whistles. You, there has to be some give and take, uh, I guess, to keep that product at a reasonable price. Um, but anyway, the front pocket, let's see. So now I put most things in plastic bags. Um, so this is, yeah, I keep my licenses and an SD card reader for any trail cams that I that I check, keep those in a plastic bag. And actually what I use to carry my license, maybe I'll talk about that sometime. Uh, it's, it's basically a minimalist wallet made by Trayvex, made in, uh, made in the USA actually. Um, that's what I carry every day on me and they sent me a free one, kind of a, their most minimal version. Um, so I use that to carry my license and stuff like that. Stick my stuff down there, Let's see what else we got. Keep a compass in the front. Didn't have too many of those. Uh, whistle, got a compass on top of the whistle. Uh, let's see. 
waterproof matches inside of there. And this is waterproof. Uh, it's got a string around it too. I, I wouldn't wear it around my neck, but. Uh, another compass, I don't, I guess we're up to three compasses there. And a lot of this stuff that's in this bag actually originated from back when I took the yeah, main hunter safety course. Um, you had to, I think you had to have like a survival kit or something. So a lot of the stuff I had acquired then. And I guess it, I just kind of dumped old bags into this one. Uh, and then some scent. Tink 69, don't think I've opened this in probably 15 or 20 years. You can always drink it if you get thirsty. So yeah, that's the front pocket. Let's see what else we got. Oh, here's, so I just got this last year. Um, I was looking for, I, I had, I was in the market for a good fixed blade knife. It's made by Topps Knives. And actually my boss had bought this for me. I had never mentioned to him I was looking for a good fixed blade um, to carry with me. More of like a, a survival type knife to carry in the woods. Something that was really rugged that you could, kind of an all purpose thing. I wouldn't carry this in my belt. I carry, a, I mean, I'm, I've used the same buck knife um, deer hunting my entire life that I've cleaned all my deer with. This, uh, yeah, I was looking for a good fixed blade. <laughs> I think it's um, 1098 steel, I believe is the, I'd have to look it up. It's kind of a mid-level steel that it's made out of. It is, I think they differentially hard, harden these blades. Um, let's see if I can. So the spine, I guess, is a little more flexible and the edge stays, is pretty hard, stays super, super sharp. It's got a lot of heft to it. They're made in the USA, uh, lifetime warranty on them. They'll actually, they will put a new edge on your blade, on your knife for free. You send it back to them, they'll put a new, uh, uh, a new edge on your knife and then send it back to you. All you do is pay shipping, we'll do that for free. So yeah, it seems like it, I mean, like I said, it's a lot of heft to it. It's got a lot of metal in it. It's a pretty solid knife. So yeah, that's, that's something I've been looking for for a while. So I've now added that. Let's see, some wool gloves. I love wool. You'll see most of my stuff is wool. I try to just minimize synthetic stuff altogether. Oh, what do we got here? Wrappers, cliff bar, pine bar. I'll throw those away. Grunt call. It's supposed to be like one of those ones that don't that doesn't freeze. But I will tell you, if it's full of snow, it won't work. I was tracking a buck one time that I jumped up and I had it outside of my jacket. <laughs> the thing, it hangs. Upside, it hangs weird around your neck, so it hangs with the bell, or whatever you call it, the end of it, kind of up, so it collects stuff. And I had just gone through some uh, bunch of trees that had snow on it, and apparently this had filled up with snow. I jumped the bucket, I pulled this up to go grunt, and it was just like, Whoa! it sounded like a, I don't know, a terrible cough. Did not sound like a buck grunt. Um, anyway, yeah, I keep that. I keep a couple grunt calls. Another pair of gloves, which I don't really wear that much, because they're, well, do I don't, but. Get some fire starter. Nice uh, wool hat. Which this is a Filson wool hat. I buy a lot of Filson uh, wool clo uh, wool gear. Um, it makes some pretty high quality, high quality wool. Another whistle. I think that came free with the knife. Uh, headlamp. That's pretty indispensable. This actually, I probably should buy a few more. This bounce, I basically bring this in between all my packs, whether it's fishing season or we're out hiking. Um, nothing like having hands, having your hands free and, and having light. Or you leave a track late at night, late at night and you need to get out. Um, walking out from a trout pond in the middle of the night, that comes in handy. So I think that's everything. Oh, we got a few more things here. So it's got another pouch, on, I'll show you the inside. It's all nylon lined. Like I said, I don't think it's completely waterproof, but I've never had anything inside get wet. Drag harness, which I've never used. And we've got a fire starter. This is by Strike Force. Uh, so yeah, just a fire starter, um, which I've, I've used just to see if I can start a fire with it. And uh, it works pretty well. It's orange, so if you set it down, you won't lose it. Um, yeah, so several ways to start a fire, and I usually keep a lighter in here too. That may not be. So that's everything. Oh, and then the GPS on top, which I hardly use anymore. 
Uh, this is a GPS map 64. Where we hunt, I don't get cell service, but I use Onyx on my cell phone. And you just basically preload the maps ahead of time where you're hunting. And that's been pretty amazing. I had some hesitations about it in the first season. So I just, I was like, well, I'll try it and see how it works out. The first season I was out, I don't think I pulled my GPS out once. I didn't have to look at it. I, I'm amazed at how it works. Yeah. So anyway, I was inside getting ready. I was going to come up here and, and start cleaning up my stuff a little bit. And I've got some other things that maybe I'll talk about stuff that I've bought to use for hunting. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of gimmicks out there. A lot of stuff that isn't worth it. And I'm pretty careful. Like I said, I hate buying something and just having to sit around and not use it. And I tend to, I tend to initially think that everything that comes out on the market anyway is a gimmick. I'm probably a pretty hesitant buyer with a lot of things, but yeah, like I said, this this pack, they, they hit a home run with this. Again, for me, it is a niche product. Um, I know a lot of guys will, that use these packs, they'll put them under their jacket. I don't. I keep mine on the outside of my jacket. What little bit of snow gets on it, um, I've never had an issue with of it getting in behind my back. And the reason I do that is I'll tell you why, because I, basically I can just pick it up off my hips and swing it around and access everything right in the front and then swing it back behind me when I'm done using it. And I, I mean, I do it several times a day, you know, whether I'm checking GPS or I'm grabbing a snack or I, I mean, I keep some camera gear with me. So I'll swing it back and forth throughout the day. So yeah, it's well made. The wool, you know, I'm, I'll go over, I guess, some of the stuff that, that could be better. And again, you know, at what point? You make it so expensive that it becomes cost prohibitive for people to buy. You know the wool, it's wool uh, on the outside, which is quiet and, and wicks the moisture away well. Probably not the highest quality wool. One of, one of my biggest issues with it is the belt. Isn't It's just a nylon strap. Not a lot of support with it, so it's almost like the, the bag hangs um, off your backside a little bit. The last thing that probably and it's more of aesthetics, is this GPS holder. It kind of looks like an afterthought. So it's just two kind of, I mean, it looks like almost something that I would have done in home ec class if I, was, if I was making it. It's a great, great idea. I guess in my opinion, it doesn't look the greatest, but I mean, I'm not out there trying to make a fashion statement. No one really sees me wearing it anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter. It, the thought is great. You know, it's on top of your pack. You know, because my other packs, you'd throw your GPS in the in the pack, and it basically, you know, as you're walking in, as you're moving through the woods, as the day goes on, it ends up falling down and amongst your junk that's in there. So basically, it keeps it quick and accessible on the top of it. But I mean, I don't use my GPS hardly at all anymore. So, yeah, I'd probably shelve that at this point. But yeah, all in all, man, I I wish they were still available. Yeah. So that's basically, like I said, I was inside getting ready to come out here and clean some stuff up. And I was like, hey, oh yeah, that was a good, good little buy. I ought to share that. Yeah, I hope, hope you enjoyed it. And I hope everyone's getting ready for a Merry Christmas. That's coming right up. Probably might be the last deer hunting video that I do. Um, so kind of reorganize everything, get everything cleaned up, get everything put away, and then start transitioning for, for the next outdoor season. Hal Blood and those guys over at Big Woods Box. Um, did a did a fine job on this. I hope they'll they'll have some more available someday. So, see ya. Well, son of a gun. Now I emptied this thing out. I gotta figure out where everything goes back into this thing. <laughs>